Good morning, guys. How are you all doing? I miss you guys. It's been way too long since I uploaded any content to my channel. I really apologize for that. There has been a lot going on. As you probably already saw that I came back from a trip to Norway just last night. I actually arrived here around midnight. I usually don't wake up this early. I woke up around four o'clock this morning. However, I guess that's jet lag. For those of you who travel a lot, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? So in this episode, I wanna just do a little recap of what's been going on these last couple of months. And uh, apart from me making a trip to Norway, just prior to that, I also had a visitor, my mother, she came down to visit me and she spent just uh, under a month here. And I actually went back together with her to Norway where I spent an additional three weeks. And obviously I came back last night. So it's been kind of difficult to make any content for you guys. This room that I'm currently in is one of the rooms here at the bed and breakfast that I currently own and run here. This is my business here in Brazil. And um, of course of me living here, occupying this room is supposed to be temporary. It's not supposed to be permanent because for those of you who have been following me on my channel, you guys already know that I am in the process of constructing my own apartment here at my bed and breakfast. However, I've had to put that on hold for the time being, and I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later. But I figured I'd start off by telling you guys a little bit of what's going on here at my business, here in Brazil and in general around the world. I mean, if you haven't been living under a rock for the last two, three years, then you guys already know we had the pandemic and also now we have the war in Ukraine and the result of that is obviously inflation and everything has become astronomically expensive. We're talking about a recession in a lot of countries and obviously that also affects me here in Brazil. You know, I think Brazil is one of those countries that has been least affected. One of those countries at least who have been least affected by the war in Ukraine and with the rising cost of basically everything. Of course, we do have inflation here in Brazil as well. We've seen food prices go up, we've seen gas prices go up and energy, but in general, compared to other countries such as, you know, Europe or the US, Brazil is really not that bad. And thank God for that, because if Brazil would have followed the trend as we're seeing in the rest of the world, I would probably be struggling quite a bit. So luckily, it's not that bad here in Brazil at the moment. However, what's going on around the world still affects my business quite a lot, especially during these months of October, November, December. It's the months where we see the most influx of tourists here in Brazil. And unfortunately, they've been more or less absent until basically now. Uh, even now, there is not nearly as many tourists as we saw pre-pandemic in 2019. There are still way fewer tourists present here in Brazil at the moment, unfortunately. However, it looks like they're gradually coming back. And I do believe the reason for that is obviously the, the cost of living in Europe and in the US and everywhere else, I guess, that has just gone up so much that people, instead of traveling, people basically tend to stay at home. They wanna save up. They wanna spend as little as possible because obviously they are struggling. A lot of these, a lot of us are really struggling these days and Another thing is something that I recently noticed because I came back from a flight from Norway last night. Just the cost of plane tickets nowadays is just astronomical. It's almost twice as expensive now to travel to South America than it was pre-pandemic. And it's just insane. Some of these tickets that I found online are selling for upwards of 2000 US dollars in economy class round trip from Europe to, to Brazil. Obviously, with the cost of, of living just going up so much and then you're gonna, it, and then of course airfare is being so expensive. I completely understand why people are just choosing to stay at home and, and save money instead of traveling. 
it, it makes complete, complete sense, right? So last month in October, I probably had the worst October ever since I, since I opened my doors, you know, for 10 years ago. It was supposed to be one of those months where I, I make a lot. And especially now in November as well, November started quite slow, but luckily, as of right now, I can see a lot of last last minute reservations coming in and it looks like it's it's getting better. As I, as I previously mentioned, we don't have nearly the amount of international travelers as we did have pre-pandemic, but at least I'm basically 80% fully booked during the entire month of November, which is great. So thank God for that. I'm just hoping this trend continues until December and maybe even in January, because after the carnival, all the tourists are gone. Even the local tourists, they stop coming. So after carnival, it's completely dead. It's the low season. I'm lucky if I can manage to sell out my rooms even during the weekends. I just wanna emphasize how extremely important it is for me to make a lot of money right now in October, November, December, because the re revenue that I make in these three months here, this is what I need to get on by in the low season. So basically I save up that money and that is what I use to get on by in the low season. So until basically the months of May and June, that's usually when it starts picking up again. So it has been a struggle. It has been quite difficult. If you watch my previous episode, I also mentioned that unfortunately I had to lay off one of my employees employers who has been with me basically ever since I opened my doors here at the bed and breakfast for 10 years ago. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I thought she was a really good worker. I quite enjoyed having her here. She's a hard worker, but unfortunately she didn't get along with my other employers. So they basically gave me an ultimatum as either she leaves or everybody else leaves. So unfortunately I had to make that really hard decision to let her go and she was not happy with that. She said it was deeply unfair, but that was the only solution I could find. And she, unfortunately, she's trying to drag me to court because she wants more compensation. I'm not really that stressed about it because I have a good lawyer and he tells me, well, you, you've done everything correctly. You've done everything by the books, however, this is Brazil, you know, people can sue anybody for anything. So it's more a hassle than it is. I'm, I'm not I'm not really worried about it. I think it's gonna be absolutely fine, but then again, you never know. And also I'd like to make an episode of that sometimes where I tell you guys exactly how to go about, if you start your own business, how, how you need to go about employing somebody um, there, you know, the workers' rights, your rights as an employer and everything. I want to make that episode when everything here is settled with this uh, employer that I had to, to lay off. I don't want to talk, go into too much detail about that right now because I want just want to see how everything plays out. And then afterwards, I'd love to make an episode on that and, and go into more detail of what to do and, of course, what not to do in these types of situations because if you're gonna have if you're gonna hire somebody here you really need to do everything correctly especially as a foreigner because um, if if you don't it's very easy here just to you trust somebody and you you just pay them in cash if you need to let them go you know if something happens if they steal from you or something whatever happens and you need to to let them go then of course you can get into serious trouble if they can actually prove that they worked for you in X amount of time and without you actually paying paying their their pension and of course also their their taxes, right? So luckily I've done everything, all of that by the book, so it's all good in that department, for me at least, but you know one day I'll make an episode about it and uh, and uh, and I'll tell you everything about how all of this plays out. Apart from that, we recently received a new president, Lula da Silva. I don't I have a general rule. I don't like to to talk politics, not with my friends, not with my family. I just don't like it. 
the whole thing that's been going on here in Brazil is basically just a repeat of what happened in the USA with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. It just divides the entire country and it's actually become a bit ugly just how even families have been split up uh, because of politics, because of everything that's been going on here. And it's, 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 it's really a shame. But then you can ask how this has affected me and my business. And I'm going to tell you, and it's probably not what you think at all. It's quite, it's quite interesting actually, but it has affected this business quite negatively, the elections. And the reason for that is there is a law here in Brazil that during the election day, which always falls on a Sunday, you're not allowed to serve any alcohol. Okay. So after midnight, Saturday, midnight, coming into Sunday, all the bars, all the restaurants, everything needs to close. Obviously, as I recently mentioned, there is a lack of tourism, international tourists coming into Brazil. So obviously I am totally dependent on the locals coming in from the nearest city of Fortaleza, coming up here to my bed and breakfast, spending the weekend. That is where I make my revenue. That is that they are paying my bills. And that is how I survive. Basically Brazilians being Brazilians, Brazilians, they want to spend their day at the beach. They want to go at night. They want to drink beer. They want to drink their capri, caprinhas. If they can't do that, then they just stay at home. They don't even bother traveling. So basically during election day, the, my bed and breakfast was empty. <laughs> it was totally empty. I did, there was no foreign, foreign visitors and all the locals, they stayed at home. They didn't bother coming. So that really hurt me bad. And if you have been following the elections here in Brazil, you guys know that the candidates need to have at least 50% of the votes to be elected president. And in the first round, neither Lula da Silva or Jair Bolsonaro made 50% of the votes. So it had to go to the second round. And that was at the end of October. The first round was in the beginning of October. The second round was at the end of October. And so what happened was the second round, exactly the same thing, not allowed to serve alcohol. Nobody came. My bed and breakfast was all empty once again. So I had two weekends during the month of October where it was already really slow. And that really hurt me bad. I, I really didn't need that. So this election really, really, really hurt me. And, um, but like I said, there is nothing I can do about it. And I just need to do the best that I can. And obviously, thank God, as of right now, in the middle of November, it looks like there's a lot of reservations are starting to trickle in, especially from foreign travelers. So it took them quite a while, but it looks like, I don't know if they are getting some last minute deals or on air, air tickets or something like that, but luckily, they are starting to arrive and uh, at the moment I'm starting to make a little bit of money again thankfully because this is I really need this revenue I need, really need this to work at this time so I can survive the low season and coming into to May June next year again so so obviously it's been quite stressful and me living in this <laughs> This apartment here as uh, one of the rooms here in the, uh, the bed and breakfast. It obviously as well, it, it doesn't make my life any easier because I really like to, I'd, I'd love to have my own place. I'm constructing my apartment, but the problem there again is that because of all the construction, because of the noise, because of all the construction materials, the dust and everything that comes with constructing in an apartment, and the fact that I'm constructing it right here at my business on the third floor, obviously it's going to affect all the guests and their experience here. And I don't want to do that because right now I really need this to work. I really need all of this revenue. I need to make as much money as possible so I can make it through the, through the low season. 
And then you might ask, why don't you construct your apartment during the low season then when there is not so many guests there? Well, the reason for that is the rainy season because I'm actually at my bed and breakfast, there are two, two floors. I'm constructing my apartment on the third floor. When I'm gonna build that apartment there, I need to take off the roof raise the walls and then put the roof on top of that again. When I take off this roof during the rainy season, this concrete slab on top, it's not waterproof, unfortunately. And I learned that the hard way because in the beginning I didn't have any tiles. I just thought about constructing a flat roof, but after a while the sun, when it beats down, it starts to crack all of that stuff and and in the end it the water actually seeps through and immediately I had a I had a it was leaking water inside two of the rooms and that is a huge problem so I'm kind of stuck here because I can't construct my apartment during the rainy season because of the rain obviously and I can't construct my apartment now, when I'm totally dependent on the revenue of, of keeping my business open. So I'm kind of stuck here in this limbo, but I'm just praying that next year, I said this in 2021, that 20, you know, 22 is gonna be the year where everything is gonna be back to normal. Of, of course that didn't happen and I'm saying this now I'm praying for 23 to be the year where I'm gonna make serious cash and that I can just finish my apartment I just close down the the bed and breakfast for a couple of months and just build it just get it done however <laughs> I'd gotta I just gotta see how all of this plays out in the end so all of this obviously it, it stresses me out. I try not to stress too much about it because ultimately it's really out of my hands. There's not, there's not anything I can do about it. I just need to focus on my business and do the best that I can right here, right now, and just try to make all of this work as best as I can. And don't stress about too much about the future because really there's nothing you can do about it, right? So. There's just a lot going on and it's just been hard. It's been difficult, but hopefully it, I see the light at the end of the tunnel as of right now, as we're getting some foreigners coming in. So hopefully this will work. You know, it will have a happy ending and all of this will be fine. However, there is some good news and that is that this is not my primary source of income. I do have a business in Norway where I can use that income, that cash, and put that into my business here in Brazil. However, that was never my plan. My plan, my ultimate goal here in Brazil is obviously to make this my future, make this my primary source of income, and just live off this business, this bed and breakfast here permanently. That is my ultimate goal. How long is it gonna take before I realize that goal? I, I have no idea, but it would be really nice. I mean, that is the dream that I have and the dream of probably many of you guys as well is early retirement where you can, you know, sit back, relax, enjoy life and with it just a steady income because I, I truly enjoy working at this bed and breakfast i enjoy meeting new people i enjoy this is this is for me this is not work for me this is all fun it's it's good i mean even with all the issues even with all the challenges problems bureaucracy everything that comes with it i've gotten so used to it now that and of course i have so many contacts so many friends that will come in and help me with any issues that I might have that as of now it's not really a serious problem anymore I've 18 years here in Brazil I've learned the ropes of how everything works here so for me it's not this is not work for me this is just something I truly enjoy doing and every every day I wake up I I can't wait to start the day and just 
see how whatever happens. And that is something that I want every single day for the rest of my life, for the remainder of my life. And, and that is my ultimate goal. But for the time being, I, I don't have I don't have the courage to just let everything go of my business there in Norway, just to leave that and just live off this bed and breakfast. There are too many uncertainties as of right now. Until now, it's not been necessary for me to actually use my income from my business in Norway to help out with paying whatever expenses that I have here at my bed and breakfast, thank God. That has not happened yet, but it helps me to sleep well at night knowing that I have that income. Pardon my friends, if the shit hits the fan, then at least I can sleep well at night knowing that I have that, that source of income. And just to round off this episode, this video here, um, just a word of advice for you guys who have a dream of relocating. It may be here in Brazil or it may be any country anywhere else in the world. Just remember, it's always good to have a plan B if the shit should hit the fan. If you come into this sort of situation, it's always good to have a plan B because you never know. I've seen so many foreigners sell everything they had back home, come here to Brazil. They put all of their eggs in one basket. They try to make it work. And ultimately after a couple of months, after a year, they had to go back home with nothing because they obviously didn't have a plan B. Like for me, when I opened the doors to this bed and breakfast, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know anything about tourism or running a hotel, a bed and breakfast. This is something that you learn, you learn the ropes. And even if you really know the business, even if you did the same thing back home where you live, that you have that experience, great. But still, you're coming to a different country with different laws, things work differently and if you don't know the language, it's there's going to be that huge barrier. So just keep that in mind. And that is just the best tip that I can give you guys. Just sit down, plan ahead and don't sell off everything. Keep a have a plan B, keep a reserve of cash when things don't work out the way you expected and just be patient and after a while things will eventually work out hopefully but anyways it's not to deter any of you guys for you know following your dreams um i love it down here i made it work as i could probably quit my my business in norway and just live off you know everything here in at my my business here in brazil however like i told you for the time being, just for peace of mind, I'm gonna hold off and wait until hopefully things will return back to normal. So so that's it guys. I'm, I'm not gonna drag on any, any longer with this. Um, I just thought you guys deserve a small recap of what's been going on and, and uh, my struggles these last couple of months. So regarding this channel, the Brazilian expat, first of all, there's one thing that I really want to say, and that is I just passed a thousand subscribers. I'm absolutely amazed. I was never expecting that. It looks like you guys are generally enjoying this content. And I do thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for, for every single subscriber. I don't know if it's deserved because like, I've, I've been saying this in virtually every single upload that I've been making excuses as to why I'm not uploading so often. You know, I, ultimately, the, the best case scenario would be that I upload a video every single week. That is my ultimate goal, to upload one video every single week. However, there has been so much going on here and so many challenges, so many things that needs to be addressed that it has virtually been impossible but that is still my goal to 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 achieve that one day one day that i can upload one episode every single week and i want to cover as much as possible uh, for you guys to help 
you know, to give you as much information as possible as how to go about how not to make the same mistakes as I made when I, when I moved to Brazil. And uh, just to show you a little bit of, of uh, daily life here in this, what I call my home, my paradise. But anyways, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for each and every, every subscriber to my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And, uh, and hopefully you guys will stick with me, but just be patient. I'll do my best to, to make some better content for you guys and post more frequently, okay? Thank you very much once again for joining me here on the Brazilian Expat. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Until then, stay safe guys, take care and bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.